Hello, this is Mrs. Lewis. Today's lesson is on geological time. That's how we tell the history of the Earth. Scientists refer to geological time as deep time. It took place over a very, very long time. It's hard for us to comprehend that. If we think of the whole history of the Earth as having taken place in one year, it would go something like this. The pre-Cambrian time would go all the way from January through February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, all the way up to November 19th. Then we would begin the Paleozoic era. The Paleozoic era would take place in November from November 20th through December 13th. And then the Mesozoic era would take place between December 14th and December 22nd. And then the Cenozoic era would take place between December 28th and December 31st. The very last hour on December 31st would be the time when humans were on Earth. Scientists divide this time into four divisions. The first division is called an eon. Then eons are divided up into eras. Then eras into periods and periods into epochs. Each of those is a smaller section of time. Just like we divide the year up into months and then a smaller section of days, and then a smaller section of hours. As I mentioned before, the pre-Cambrian Cambrian era is most of Earth's history. 88% of Earth, Earth's history occurred from 4.6 billion years ago and lasted 4 billion years. At the very beginning of the Precambrian era, you have the formation of the Earth. That was 4,600 million years ago. And that's when all of the matter and rocks all around aggregated into the Earth. Another major event occurred about 4,500 million years ago, and that's when a giant asteroid hit the Earth, and that caused the debris to come out from the Earth and caused the formation of our moon. After that, from 4,100 million years ago to 3,800 million years ago, the Earth and all the other planets were bombarded by asteroids and comets. The asteroids and comets were very important because they brought water to the Earth. We can see remnants of this bombardment by looking at the craters on the moon and on the Earth. Once we got water, then we could get some bacteria-like organisms to evolve in the sea. The first ones that evolved were anaerobic. Then about 3,100 million years ago, aerobic bacteria evolved and they began to produce oxygen. They formed themselves into these very strange structures called stromatolites and we can see remnants of them today. Here's some stromatolites off the coast of Australia. About 650 million years ago a very strange thing happened. The entire earth was covered with ice. We call that snowball earth. It might have meant the end of earth, except volcanoes peeked their heads up through the ice and they saved the earth. The volcanoes put carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and that carbon dioxide created a greenhouse effect capturing the heat from the sun and eventually cracking the ice on snowball earth. Then came the Paleozoic era. That was from 544 to 245 million years ago. During this time, life exploded on the surface of the earth. We had the jawless fishes coming in, then the ferns, then the sharks, 
then the spiders, then the reptiles, and then the flying insects. We can find many fossils from the Cambrian time, and that started 545 million years ago. One very prevalent fossil are called trilobites, and we can find these in the rocks that date back to this time. At the end of this era was the first mass extinction, 450 million years ago. The mass extinctions were, might have been caused by the asteroids. Here's an asteroid coming here. It might have been caused by volcanoes creating clouds of dust and blocking off the heat from the sun. Or it might have been caused by climate change, probably a combination of of all these things caused the mass extinctions. After the mass extinction, not all life was annihilated, maybe 99%, but some survived. And what survived evolved into other creatures. The Mesozoic era went from 245 million years ago to 66 million years ago. This is oftentimes described as the age of the dinosaurs. And certainly during this time, during this long period, the dinosaurs dominated on the earth. But other things did evolve. About 155 million years ago, the dinosaurs evolved into the first bird. This funny-looking creature is called Archaeopteryx. You'll learn a lot more about him when you take biology next year. Also, during this time, there were some small mammals that evolved. About 220 million years ago, some little creatures like this began to evolve. And these little mammals were not very successful because they lived alongside of the dinosaurs, but they ended up being the survivors when the dinosaurs left. During this time, the large landmass called Pangaea formed about 240 million years ago, and all the land was kind of in one spot. And then, 220 million years ago, it began to come apart. The Mesozoic era ended with another mass extinction. Probably another asteroid caused this mass extinction, or perhaps some combination of climate change and volcanoes. At any rate, after this mass extinction, that was the end of the dinosaurs. Then we come to the Cenozoic era. This is the era that we're in right now. It goes from 66 million years ago to the present day. This is called the Age of Mammals. During this time, we have horses and whales and dogs and elephants evolving. And toward the end of this era, we have modern humans evolving. One of the prevalent events that occurred during this era were the Ice Ages. And during that time, glaciers advanced and retreated over the surface of the Earth. This started about 258 million years ago and is continuing today. Some people think we are in another Ice Age today. 